So we have proper time and the space-time interval. And their definitions are a little bit abstract. So let me say a few things to um, hopefully make these concepts more concrete. So let's turn to our friends uh, Anastasia and Beowulf, and they each uh, have a clock. And let's say they start off together, and maybe they exchange a handshake or greeting, and let's call that event A. And then Beowulf wanders off, and Anastasia just hangs out, and Beowulf keeps wandering, wandering around, wandering around, and then they end up together again, and they shake hands again, or high-five or whatever, and call that event B. So two events, A and B. What time difference would um, they each measure? Well, Anastasia is in an inertial reference frame. She's at rest. So she's going to measure the space-time interval. Beowulf is not in an inertial reference frame. He's wandering all around. He's not moving at a constant velocity. His direction is changing. His speed is probably changing as well. So the time that he would measure between the two events would be a proper time. It's his own time, proper in the sense of own, um, but he follows a different path through space-time, a different world line to come here. So what special relativity says is that they're going to measure these times to have uh, time intervals to be different. Time is not absolute. In Newtonian or Galilean physics, where time is time, everybody agrees on time, they would measure the same time for this and that, the same time having a lapse between those two events. But in special relativity, that's not the case because proper time and space time are different quantities. This business about the difference between proper time and space-time interval isn't just something that applies to stuffed animals. It very much applies to the real world in which we live. So in 1971, um, two scientists, Joseph Hoffele, who I think is a physicist, and Richard Keating, an astronomer, did an experiment similar to the one I just described with Beowulf and Anastasia, but with real clocks and in the real world. So what they did was they took atomic clocks, very, very, very accurate clocks, and they took some of the clocks onto an airplane. And here's a picture of what that looked like. Here's Hoffle and Keating on the um, airplane, and you can see their clocks, their giant clunky things. Uh, and they took some clocks, a couple clocks, left them on the ground, a couple clocks, put them in an airplane, flew that airplane around the world, or maybe flew it from the US to Europe and back again, and then reunited the clocks and found that indeed, they now measure different times. They were synchronized to the nanosecond before, but after one clock takes this journey, a different world line through the world and rejoins um, its other clocks, um, they're no longer synchronized. The reason being that proper time and the space-time interval are not the same in special relativity.